What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video and welcome to my office. So I did a shop tour a few months back and I know a lot of you guys were asking in the comments to see the office and it's a pretty good reason I didn't show it back then and that's because it was far from ready for prime time. So I have finally had the chance to get the office dialed in and I figured I'd show you guys both how I kind of built some of the stuff in here but also just kind of give you an office tour since a lot of you guys were interested in it. So let's go ahead and move into the office. So I guess first, let's just talk about the size of this office. I did build this out kind of to my specs during the shop build. Uh, I didn't want it to be too big because basically every bit of office space I added was space I lost in the shop. So I wanted to keep it pretty compact. There's really only ever maybe two or three people working in here. Uh, the size of this space is eight foot by 11 foot for the footprint and the ceilings are eight feet tall, which is really kind of perfect for two or three people to work in. It's enough space to have some storage and multiple computer stations without having a lot of wasted space in here. So the first thing you're probably noticing in here is all of this acoustic foam. It's definitely very colorful and it's obviously uh, pretty eye-catching. So uh, one thing when we built out this office space was we added some soundproofing insulation, but I didn't really think about how the fact that all of the surfaces in here being super hard, we've got plywood walls, plywood ceiling, and then vinyl plank flooring over concrete. That was going to create a lot of very quick, almost kind of like slapback echo. So the first time I tried to record a voiceover in here, I <laughs> immediately realized that I needed to address that echo and started looking around online and it seemed like acoustic foam was the kind of perfect solution. And it's really worked out great. I am not an audio engineer or expert by any means, but just did some research online as far as where to place it and how much to use. And it seemed to work out really well. I used about 60 tiles. These are one foot by one foot by two inches thick. I'll have links to all the stuff I talk about in this video in the video description below in case you want to check that out. But it was super simple to put up. I just basically used some command strips and stuck it up. Um, some people use like spray adhesive, but that's a pretty permanent solution. And I wanted to be able to take these with me or move them around if I need to. Uh, I also did a lot of thinking on the pattern because since this was gonna have such a visual impact on the space, I wanted them to look kind of cool. And I never really seen anybody use this kind of X shape, but I think it works really well. It covers a lot of space on the walls, but also kind of gives it a cool look in my opinion. Uh, basically, I have foam on the front walls directly behind both the computers, on the side walls, on the ceiling and then I also added some bass traps in the upper corners and the ceiling is especially important for vocal recording I do voiceovers in here pretty much every week and it really helps to tame that echo as hopefully you can hear in this video fortunately I don't have any before audio but it was pretty bad in here. Next, I guess let's talk about the desk, which was kind of the next thing I worked on after putting the foam up. So the desk is just some plywood that was left over from the home bar I built a couple weeks ago. Uh, basically, they're just pieces of three quarter inch plywood ripped to width and cut to length. And then I joined them together with a combination of dominoes and pocket holes. And that actually made for a really great kind of knockdown joinery method so that I could get everything assembled in the shop, get it sanded, added round overs and, and all that kind of stuff and then take it apart and bring it into this space because that desktop, if it was all one piece permanently, would have been way, way too big. Also, if you don't have a domino joiner, dowel joinery would have worked just as well. A cheap Rockler kind of dowel jig would have been perfect and would give you the same kind of knockdown technique. So I sprayed on a couple coats of a water-based polyurethane for the finish and then I could get it moved into the shop. So to mount the desk, I used these fast cap speed braces, which I used also from the lumber rack in my shop space. These things are awesome. They support a ton of weight, super easy to install. And one cool thing about using them in an office space is they have these holes built in, which work great for cable management. So I could really easily run my cables through the holes in there and keep it nice and tidy underneath the desk and just keep any ugly cables out of eyesight. So to make sure all the speed braces were mounted at a level height, I used a line laser, which if you watch my shop build, you know, I absolutely love the line laser, use it on any kind of project like this. And essentially that way I could set up the line laser within an inch or two of where I wanted my final line to be and then just use a tape measure and a pencil to transfer an actual line to the wall because when you're installing brackets like this your body is going to end up blocking the laser so it's just easier to go ahead and mark it with a pencil and that way you can turn off the laser and then actually mount the brackets. So I mounted the brackets just with a couple two and a half inch screws into each stud and then I could go ahead and get the desktop put on and so I just moved it in one panel at a time attached the first two panels again using those pocket screws from before. 
and then I moved in the third panel and then could attach the entire desktop surface down to the brackets. And so FastCap actually makes these really tiny little screws with a wide head that are absolutely perfect for this kind of thing. And I basically just used a bunch of those to attach the desktop to the brackets. I did go ahead and clamp the desktop in place prior to adding the screws just to make sure I had a nice even spacing. And one other thing you might notice is that I left about an inch and a half gap uh, behind the desktop surface around the entire desktop. And that's mostly for running cable but I also knew I wanted to add some LED backlighting just for a nice visual effect. So speaking of which, the next step in the process was adding those LED strips. Super simple, just peel and stick and ran them around the back edge of the desk and actually rounding over those corners made that a lot easier. And I think the kind of final look with all of the LED backlighting adds a ton to the kind of visual effect of this space. And again, I'll link to those LED lights in the video description. And then they actually came with a little rotating dimmer switch that I can turn on and off and I kind of hid tucked under the back edge of of the desks. So super easy to turn on and off and they look really cool. So after the desk, I guess the next thing to build was this little cabinet for these plastic totes. So I picked these guys up from Target. They were super cheap, three bucks. And uh, unfortunately they were kind of a weird size. So most of these kind of little totes you see are kind of either 11 by 11 or 13 by 13. These were more long and skinny, uh, which I actually think works out a lot better for actual usability. But that also meant that I kind of had to custom build something, which obviously that's no big deal. Uh, so I just used some of the really inexpensive kind of builder grade, construction grade, plywood I had left over from the shop build and basically just cut the pieces to size. I'll include the SketchUp file in the video description in case you guys want to see that. Um, but then assembled the whole thing with some screws, glue, and brad nails. I used those Rockler corner clamps to help keep everything together while I was assembling the cabinet. And it's the first time I've actually used those correctly. And then I just kind of broke all the edges with my random orbit sander and then sprayed the whole thing black with some black poly, which I've been using a ton of lately. Uh, so one thing I figured out when I moved the cabinet into the shop is that it actually interfered with a couple of the speed braces that I had under this desk section. So I essentially needed to make this cabinet support this whole desk section. And so to do that, I added some two by fours underneath to kind of take up some of that spacing and then just shimmed up those two by fours until it was nice and even with this whole desk surface. And I think the final result is a really nice kind of built-in looking cabinet. Obviously I could save a couple bucks on those speed braces and use those for a different project. And I think it worked out pretty well. The only bit of a bummer is that there is an outlet behind this cabinet. So if I ever want to get access to that, I'll probably have to drill a pretty big hole with a hole saw in the back of this cabinet. But other than that, it uh, worked out really well. So I guess from there, that's most of the actual stuff I built. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the gear and some of the other things I just kind of bought for this space. So first let's move over to, this is kind of the guest workstation, if you will. So I've got a buddy who helps me edit my videos. And then I've got another guy who is newer, who helps me on the kind of back end digital side. And so what I wanted was a workstation where I could bring my laptop Laptop, since they're gonna be using software that's paid that I have copies of. Uh, and then with one cable, get it up and running with a monitor, speakers, a keyboard, and a mouse. To me, I much prefer that kind of desktop work experience. I think it's a little bit more ergonomically comfortable and that's kind of what I wanted for them. And it also, that one USB cable also charges the laptop, so it keeps it nicely powered up. So I've got this LG 4K monitor picked up on an Amazon warehouse deal for super cheap. This thing is really cool because again, it does USB power pass -through through to the MacBook Pro. I've got this little stand from 12 South, which just kind of nicely cradles the MacBook Pro. And then I've got these Polk audio speakers, which I've had for quite a while. I think they're discontinued at this point. But cool thing about these is they have a USB DAC digital to analog converter. So then that way I can plug that USB cable again into the LG monitor and get nice quality audio from the laptop through those speakers. And then for the keyboard and mouse, I'm just using the Apple Magic keyboard. And I have this cheap little Logitech mouse right now, but I just just need to find my other Apple Magic Keyboard and that will eventually be in this space. But so I've basically got enough room for one person to work here and then with a little bit of rearrangement, if another person needs to work on their laptop here, that's really easy. So that was kind of my whole goal was to be able to have two people working side by side on this side of the office in case all three of us are working at the same time. And that's why I actually made this section of this desktop where all the printing and those kind of devices are a little bit shallower to give me another couple inches of desk 
width over here. So I guess while we're over here, let's go ahead and talk about the next section. This is kind of just a random assortment of stuff. I've kind of left this a little bit flexible. I threw some camera gear up here just to make it look nice, but I've got a actual printer, which I use uh, every week when I print out my cut list for whatever project I'm working on. I like to have it physically printed because when I'm in the shop, I don't want to be bringing a tablet or a laptop and getting it all dusty. And then I have my Ultimaker 3 3D printer from Matter Hackers. This thing is an absolute beast. It's definitely one of the nicer 3D printers out there. Works flawlessly and is something I want to do more with. I, I know I don't really use it enough to justify this nice of a 3D printer and it's something I'm interested in playing around with more. Then I've just got some assorted camera gear. Got a DJI Ronin S gimbal, which is actually what's being used right now for this recording. Also have an Edelkrone slider, which I absolutely love. So then I guess from there, we can look at my little Funko Pop collection up here. Uh, I figured I wanted to add something a little bit kind of to show my personality in the office space and also just to bring a little bit of, of fun to the space. So uh, these are from a couple of my favorite shows and movies. Over here is from Community, which is my all-time favorite TV show. I've seen it dozens of times all the way through. And then I've got The Nightmare Before Christmas, which has always been one of my favorite movies since I was a kid. Love the soundtrack and I think there are some really cool Funkos in that collection as well. All right, before we move over to my part of the desk, let's take a second to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Audible. So I'm super excited that Audible is sponsoring this video because I have been a paid Audible member for probably about a decade now. So if you're not already an Audible member, you can sign up for a 30-day trial by going to audible.com slash crafted workshop or texting crafted workshop to 500, 500 and that will get you one free audiobook and two free Audible originals, which are some new types of content they have. They are exclusive audio titles made by storytellers in everything from literature to theater to all kinds of different topics. If you need an audiobook recommendation, I just finished Atomic Habits by James Clear, which is a great, pretty short, but very much to the point audiobook about creating new habits in your life. As a small business owner, my time is very, very valuable and trying to create habits that make me more productive day to day is super important. So again, if you want to start your 30 day trial with Audible, you can go to audible.com slash crafted workshop or text crafted workshop to 500 500. Thanks again to Audible for sponsoring this video. And let's go ahead and show you what I did over in my part of the desk. So I use an iMac Pro for my main kind of editing rig. I like it quite a bit. I'm a huge Apple guy. If you guys can't tell, I think I own everything they make. And I think the iMac Pro is an excellent editing computer for actual editing software. I use Final Cut Pro 10, which again, I've been using Final Cut since I was in high school and it's just super comfortable to me. I know how to do everything I need to do. So that's what I use. I also think it works really well with Apple computers better than things like Premiere and things like that. For the keyboard, I've just started dipping my toes into the whole mechanical keyboard thing. I have wanted to get into it for a while, but as a Mac user, they can be a little bit tricky to find keyboards that work kind of natively with your Mac. But I finally found one. This is the Varmillo. Uh, I think it's the VA108 or something like that. Again, I'll link to it in the video description, but it's got the full 10 keys, which I use all the time because I do a lot of 3D modeling and working with spreadsheets and things like that. So I type in a lot of numbers into my keyboard, but then it's also got all of the Apple function keys so that I can control my music, control the volume, brightness, all that kind of stuff very easily from the keyboard. The one thing about this keyboard is it's kind of tall. So I actually ended up needing to build a keyboard rest for it. So I had this piece of zebra wood that I've had laying around for I think like three or four years at this point, just waiting for that really special project. And I figured this would kind of be perfect for it. It was kind of the perfect width. And so I just cut off a section, uh, flattened it on the jointer and planer, uh, kind of cut an angle on the front edge on the table saw so that my wrist could kind of rest nice and comfortably, sanded it, and then applied a couple coats of simple finish. And I think it turned out great. It's really pretty. Uh, I think it works really well. It's super comfortable on my wrist. It's got a nice matte finish. And I think it kind of fits my desk super nicely. And then to the left and right of my keyboard, I actually have two different mouses. On the right, I've got the Logitech MX Master 2S, which is my all-time favorite mouse. Thing works awesome. And then the trackpad is one for my editor who really prefers to use a trackpad. But then two, I've been kind of playing around with it when I'm video editing uh, for sliding through the timeline. It's really nice to kind of have one hand on a regular mouse and one hand on a trackpad so you can kind of get through the timeline really, really quickly and kind of move side to side. So that's been kind of a cool workflow as well. So then as far as the speakers, I'm a big sound guy. I love listening to music and also really want good quality audio for when I'm editing the videos so that I can you know hear how they sound. So I've got these JBL Studio 
video monitors. Uh, these are the five inch versions. I've actually got the eight inch version at home and they sound phenomenal. Uh, I've got them on some little foam pads to both kind of isolate them from the desktop, but then also to angle the tweeters to my ears so that it sounds a little bit better. And I've just got those hooked up with a kind of audio splitter cable directly into the headphone jack on the iMac Pro and they sound really great. So then to the left of the whole computer setup and the speakers, I've got my mic, which I use for my voiceovers. And that is on a mic stand, which kind of articulates in and out. Not a big fan of that stand, actually. I'll probably be upgrading that, um, but I do love the mic. It's the Apogee iMic 96K. It's a USB powered mic. Um, Apogee makes really great quality stuff. They're all made in the USA and been using that mic for years, both for music recording and for voiceover work. And sounds great, super easy to use because it just plugs in via USB. So then from there, I've got some more kind of storage systems below the desktop. These are kind of some Ikea Alex knockoffs. I bought these from Amazon. We don't have an Ikea here in Asheville. Uh, the closest one's like two hours away. So pick these up on Amazon. Again, I'll link to them in the video description, but essentially the same thing. Lots of little shallow drawers. They're really convenient for those kind of quick access items. I set up a little kind of charging drawer here where I can have all my cables and my camera battery chargers and that kind of thing. I have been storing all my camera gear out in the shop up until this point, and as you can imagine, they get super dusty, and I'm really excited to have a home for all that stuff in this space. So one other goal with my desktop was to kind of reduce as much clutter as I could on the actual desktop surface, and so I did that in a couple of ways. So first of all, I added this awesome little USB hub and SD card reader that just attaches to the underside of the iMac Pro, so you don't have to try to fish everything around here before I had a USB hub sitting on my desktop. It just looked kind of crappy. Uh, another thing I did was behind the iMac here, I found this thing called uh, the Backpack. It's again from 12 South who makes that MacBook Pro stand, uh, but it holds a couple of hard drives up off the desk surface with cable management built in and everything. And so that gives it tons of room for airflow. And again, just kind of tucks all that stuff away really nicely, gets them off of my desktop surface. And then the one other thing I added was this kind of wall mount for my big uh, G Speed shuttle uh, RAID, which is a 40 terabyte RAID. Um, it's what I store pretty much all of my footage on. But the really nice thing about wall mounting it is it's got tons of airflow. It's off the desktop surface. You really can't see it. And I still have access to all of the controls and, and to the on and off switch and all of the cable hookups and that kind of stuff. So that tucked away really nicely and fits perfectly behind these little cabinets over here. Okay. What else? <laughs> it's like a summation of like, and this is my new space, and it's important to have a uh, dedicated space to yeah do these projects and blah blah blah. It's, so let me I need to do the audible thing too. Let's see if they. Okay. 